In the heart of the Big Easy, where the air hums with the jazz of life and the aroma of spice lingers like a sweet memory, there's a dish that reigns supreme, jambalaya. This culinary masterpiece is a testament to the rich tapestry of Creole and Cajun heritage, each ingredient a homage to the diverse influences that have shaped the very soul of New Orleans. Imagine a cauldron bubbling over with rice, perfumed with the aromatic trio of onion, celery, and green bell pepper, the sacred trinity of Louisiana's kitchen. But that's just the beginning. Jambalaya is a carnivorous carnival where sausage, chicken, and shellfish dance together in a riotous melody of flavors. Let's journey back to the late 1700s, when the Spanish settlers ruled these bustling streets. Paella with its saffron-kissed rice was all the rage. But in a stroke of ingenuity born from necessity, the cooks of New Orleans substituted saffron with tomatoes, birthing a culinary revolution. Thus jambalaya emerged, a tantalizing departure from its Spanish cousins, infused with the very essence of the Crescent City. To savor jambalaya is to taste the soul of New Orleans, a symphony of cultural influences, harmonizing on a single plate. And what better way to honor this culinary legacy than by conjuring an authentic Creole jambalaya in your own kitchen. Stay tuned for the end of the episode. I'll be your guide through the intricate steps of crafting this quintessential dish. So don your apron, dear viewer, and let's embark on a journey to the heart of the Big Easy. When France conceded defeat in the Seven Years' War, Louisiana found itself under Spanish rule, courtesy of the Treaty of Paris in 1763. This era of Spanish dominance lasted until 1803, with a brief French interlude before Louisiana became part of the United States. The Vieux Carré, the beating heart of New Orleans, retains the indelible mark of Spanish influence in its very essence its architecture, a testament to those bygone days. Enter the Cabildo, now a revered segment of the Louisiana State Museum system, rising defiantly from the ashes of the 1788 fire. It epitomizes Louisiana's storied past. As the nerve center of Spanish authority in New Orleans, it bore witness to the historic moment when the Louisiana Purchase was inked, an event that altered the course of history. Crafted under the discerning eye of Gilberto Guillemard and funded by the illustrious Alamonster family, the Cabildo stands as a bastion of Spanish opulence. Within its storied walls, the Sala Capitular reverberated with the weighty deliberations of government, hosting luminaries like Lafayette himself. Yet behind its facade of grandeur lies a shattery past, the Calabozo, a grim reminder of its stint as a prison for the likes of Pierre Lafitte and other notorious pirates. Today, the Cabildo endures as a living testament to New Orleans' Spanish lineage, inviting wanderers to peel back the layers of its intricate history. And so, it is only fitting that we commence our journey in this sanctum of bygone errors as we traverse the cobblestone streets of Nuevo Orleans in the pursuit of the quintessential Spanish-infused dish, jambalaya. At 440 Charter Street in New Orleans, the building stands. Once called the Exchange Coffee House, later Maspero's Coffee House, now it is the original Pierre Maspero's. Built between 1795 and 1810, 
rising from the ashes of the original house, lost a fire in 1788. This building became a crucial gathering place. Planters, merchants, and privateers, the hard men with sun-brown faces, came together here. It holds stories, this place, soaked into the wood and the stone. They say it was here, in the quiet talks over strong coffee, that Andrew Jackson and Jean Lafitte laid plans to defend New Orleans. It was late 1840. The air was thick with threat. The Lafitte brothers' ghosts seemed to almost linger in the corners, watching still. Entering the establishment, I was met by a gracious maitre d', who swiftly led me to my table. Mary, my diligent server, exuded an infectious enthusiasm as she deftly took my order, a testament to her exceptional service. The air hung with the lively melodies of New Orleans, setting the tone for its spirited dining experience. Opting for the Cajun jambalaya crowned with blackened shrimp proved to be a wise choice. The establishment thoughtfully provided both Tabasco and Crystal hot sauces, accommodating a spectrum of tastes. In short order, my plate arrived, boasting a bounty of succulent shrimp and flawlessly caramelized sausage and chicken. Nestled amidst impeccably cooked rice, a judicious dash of crystals lent the ideal zest to the ensemble. The jambalaya, true to its Cajun heritage, delivered a symphony of flavor, tender meats and just the right amount of heat, accentuated by a cheeky banana pepper, a feast fit for the most discerning jambalaya connoisseur. In the heart of New Orleans, amidst the bustling streets of the French Quarter, lies a culinary sanctuary known as Café Mespera. Its roots stretch back to 1971, when it first emerged on Charter Street, before finding its current home at 601 Decatur. Despite the passage of time, its allure remains undimaged, beckoning both locals and travelers alike with the promise of authentic Southern fare. As I settled into the time-worn stool at the bar, my gaze wandered across its aged wood, a relic of a bygone era, meticulously transported from Charter Street to preserve the essence of the city's history. The bartender, a master of hospitality, greeted me warmly, his jovial demeanor setting the tone for the evening's affair. Opting for a refreshing glass of sweetened iced tea over the customary libations, I found solace in the quarter's embrace of individuality. Soon the air was thick with the aroma of jambalaya, a quintessential Creole dish that embodies the soul of Louisiana cuisine. Three generous mounds adorned my plate, each a testament to the kitchen's dedication to tradition and flavor. The marriage of tender chicken, smoky sausage, and the holy trinity of Creole cooking, bell peppers, onions, and celery, unfolded like a symphony on my palate. Yet it was the deft hand of the chef, masterfully balancing spices and seasonings, that transformed each bite into a culinary revelation. With each forkful, I embraced a sensory journey through the annals of time, tracing the footsteps of those who came before me in the pursuit of gastronomic bliss. In the heart of Café Maspero, Amidst the spirited rhythms of New Orleans, I found not just a meal, but a profound connection to the rich tapestry of Southern cuisine. In the heart of New Orleans, where the spirit of the city intertwines with its flavors, the Gazebo Cafe beckons like a siren's call to the wary traveler and the curious local alike. Located amidst the vibrant bustle of the French market, it stands as a testament to the enduring soul of this culinary mecca. As I stepped into its open embrace, I was greeted not only by the sultry strains of live jazz, but also by the promise of a quintessential New Orleans afternoon. The ambiance, a melange of market buzz and musical melodies set the stage for an unforgettable dining experience. 
In this haven of hospitality, the fare is as genuine as the smiles that adorn the faces of both diners and staff. From seafood poor boys to crawfish delight, each dish is a love letter to the rich tapestry of flavors that define the city's gastronomic landscape. But it was the jambalaya that stole the show, a symphony of spice and substance that danced upon the palate with the grace of a seasoned performer. With each forkful, I was transported to the bayous and back alleys of Louisiana, where every ingredient tells a story of tradition and triumph. And what is a mill without its accompaniment? The live music, a testament to the city's musical heritage, served as the perfect backdrop to my culinary journey. As the band's melodies filled the air, I couldn't help but feel that I was partaking in a ritual as old as time itself, a communion of food, music, and soul. In the end, as the rain threatened to dampen the festivities, I couldn't help but linger a little while longer, savoring every last note and morsel, for in the gazebo, time stands still, and every moment is a celebration of life, love, and the pursuit of culinary perfection. I'm back at Curio's once more, for the second time featuring it in a video. Couldn't resist. Food's too good. Service too quick. Curio's where whimsy meets sophistication. A refined atmosphere perfect for a memorable meal. Located at Royal and Bienville in the Bucurie, where a renowned Curio shop once stood in the late 19th century. Though that shop has vanished with the years, the thrill and wonder of it lingers still. The building spreads over two levels. Downstairs, a bar thrives with lively chatter. Upstairs, a broad dining room offers seats enough for the crowded times. At Curio's, the service was swift and precise, leaving no room for error. From the order to iced tea to the plate of blackened shrimp jambalaya, each task was executed flawlessly. Any doubts about the French Quarter service vanished. Curios in the Vue Carré sets the standard for excellence. The dish's presentation was captivating, with two hearty piles of jambalaya adorned with plump shrimp. The taste surpassed all expectations, almost reaching divine status. Each shrimp was cooked to perfection, enhancing the dish's overall texture. Curio's Jambalaya stands out for its unique spice blend, creating a harmonious symphony of flavors. The buttery notes complemented the dish's impeccability, leaving a lasting sense of contentment. Filled with tender chicken, flavorful sausage, and finely chopped green onions, every bite was a culinary revelation. Curio's Blackened Shrimp Jambalaya is a culinary masterpiece that shines brightly among its peers. Coop's Place, opened in 1983 on Decatur Street near the French Market, has become a fixture for both the people of New Orleans and those passing through, offering an honest taste to the city at good prices. It's a first come, first serve kind of a place with a raw charm and unrefined style that appeals to those looking for something real. It's known for staying open until the last dish is served and is only for those over 21 years of age. Despite being close to well-trod tourist tracks, Coop stays somewhat hidden, filled with regulars enjoying the steadfast hospitality and excellent fare, having stood firm through Hurricane Gustav. It's just the place to end up after a night wandering Frenchman Street. In the dimly lit embrace of Coop's Place, May 4th unfolded with the unexpected spectacle of Star Wars, Return of the Jedi flickering on the screen, injecting a whimsical twist to the evening's narrative. Taking my place at the bar, I was met with a bartender whose practiced hand and affable demeanor spoke volumes of hospitality. As I placed my order, the air thickened with anticipation, mingling with the comforting buzz of the surroundings. 
Suddenly, with the swiftness of a magician's sleight of hand, my rabbit jambalaya materialized. A vibrant tapestry of Creole flavors unfurling before me. Each bite of bunny, tender and succulent, bore witness to the kitchen's dedication to craft. Its essence interwoven with robust slices of sausage. The spice, a subtle yet assertive presence, danced gracefully across the palate, a testament to the delicate balance inherent in Creole cuisine. A whispered caution urged me to tread lightly with the Tabasco, for once unleashed, its fiery embrace knows no bounds. Amidst this culinary symphony, the verdant crunch of green onions added a playful counterpart, enhancing both the taste and the texture of the dish. With each forkful, the trinity of flavors, onion, celery, and bell pepper revealed their intricate choreography, a testament to the depth and complexity of Creole culinary tradition. In parting, Coop's Place not only satisfied my hunger, but also offered a glimpse into the soul of Creole cuisine, where every dish is a narrative waiting to be savored, and every bite a journey through the vibrant tapestry of flavors. Jambalaya, a dish as complex and diverse as the city of New Orleans itself, transcends mere sustenance to become a vibrant symbol of the city's rich history and culture. Born from a blend of Creole and Cajun influences, it mirrors the melting pot of flavors and traditions that define the Crescent City. As we delved into the origins and evolutions of this beloved staple, we transported through the labyrinth streets of the French Quarter where the echoes of Spanish government mingled with the vibrant energy of modern day marketplaces. Each serving of Jambalaya tells a tale, a narrative of resilience, adaptation, and innovation that has shaped the culinary landscape of New Orleans. But Jambalaya offers more than just a taste of history. It beckons us to become active participants in its ongoing story. With every bite, we are invited to embrace the spirit of tradition and community that infuses every simmering pot. Whether enjoyed in the bustling atmosphere of a local eatery or recreated in our own kitchens, Jambalaya serves as a bridge between past and present, keeping the essence of New Orleans alive and thriving with each savory spoonful. This jambalaya is a harmonious blend of rice, tomatoes, and exquisitely seasoned meats, coming together in less than an hour, yet boasting flavors as though it simmered all day. It carries the Creole touch, a testament to the city's bustling ports and diverse people. While it holds a tempting spice, it is not overwhelmed by heat. True Creole cuisine is about balance, where each flavor dances gracefully together. Some may think drowning it in red pepper makes it Creole, but they miss the mark. It's the delicate equilibrium that counts, allowing the taste of New Orleans to shine through just right in your kitchen. This is what you will need to make a traditional Creole jambalaya at home. It starts with two tablespoons of corn oil, one cup of chicken cut in small pieces, seasoned with two teaspoons of Cajun seasoning with salt, 12 ounces of smoked sausage, also cut in small pieces, one half cup tasso, Tasso may be an ingredient that many of you outside of Louisiana have never heard of. Tasso is a delightful blend of smoked and spiced goodness lovingly crafted from the hearty shoulder of a hog. It begins its journey at a substantial 7 to 8 pounds of pork. Then it is delicately sliced into generous 3 inch portions. Properly bathed in a savory cure of sodium nitrate and sugar. Next, it receives a lively kick from a harmonious mix of cayenne pepper and garlic before embracing the warmth of the smoker until it reaches a state of absolute perfection. Tasso enhances the flavor of any dish it's added to, but especially jambalaya. Two cups of the Trinity, 
28 ounces of diced tomatoes, strained. One teaspoon tomato paste added to the diced tomatoes. Add chicken stock to the leftover tomato juice in order to have four cups of liquid. Now we're gonna build our spice profile. We're gonna start off with one teaspoon of oregano. We're gonna to add to the oregano two teaspoons of Cajun seasoning with salt. Then we're gonna add a teaspoon of thyme. And you know it's not Louisiana cooking unless we have a few bay leaves. In this case, two. And then we're going to that Gulf Coastal Kitchen standard, Worcestershire sour sauce. Two teaspoons of Lee and Perrin. Two cups extra long grain white rice. Now you're gonna to wanna to rinse the rice not to remove the starch, but to remove any impurities the rice may have picked up along its way to your kitchen. Here are the directions. Heat two tablespoons of the oil in your Dutch oven. Add the chicken to the pot. Brown the chicken from three to five minutes. Stir the chicken, make sure it browns evenly on all sides. You want to cook the chicken until it gets to a caramelized color, releasing all its flavor. Now using a spider, remove the chicken to a bowl. Next, add that tasso, let it cook from two to three minutes. Hear that sound? That is your flavor developing in the pot. Then add your sausage and let that brown. That tasso and pork are releasing their oils and their fat to the pot, which is gonna flavor the dish. We have removed everything from the pot other than the fat and the original oil. Then we're gonna add the trinity. Let this sizzle in that pot from three to five minutes. We want it to release all its flavor as it browns. We have been building levels of flavor throughout this entire process that's gonna pay off in a delicious jambalaya. Now add your rice and your spices. Then the lean parent and stir it together to mix. You wanna let your rice cook in the oil for just a few minutes, I would say two to three. Add your meat back to the pot and stir to combine. Next, it's the tomatoes and tomato paste and stir that in. Next, add your fluids. Stir it all together. Make sure it is thoroughly mixed. Turn your heat all the way up and let it come to a rapid boil. Then turn your temperature down to medium low. Then simmer at medium low for 13 minutes. Then stir so the rice doesn't burn in the bottom of the pot. Decrease the temperature to low and cook an additional 12 minutes until the rice absorbs all the flavor and all the fluids. After 10 minutes, turn off the heat and let the pot sit covered before fluffing the rice. Then your jambalaya is ready to be served, capturing the essence of New Orleans with every delicious bite. I wanna thank you so much for watching this episode. Remember to hit that subscription button if you haven't already. We can't do this without you. If you haven't seen New Orleans Gumbo Odyssey, last week's episode, make sure you see it. I'll leave a link in the description. Next week's episode is Chasing the Perfect Snowball. I know you don't want to miss that one. It airs Tuesday, May 14th. Be there. And remember, it's not goodbye. It's see you next Tuesday on Gulf Coastal Connections.